to Homespun. I'm Molly and thank you so much for taking the time out of your day to join me. Uh, it's our 13th episode, which is crazy, and I'm filming all by myself. Like, how lucky is that or unlucky? <laughs> um, yeah, today I kind of wanted to, to talk with you guys about how uh, a homespun house or homespun came to be. So, um, you guys know that I talk about my grandma a lot. She and I are super, super close, and I've kind of, I followed in her footsteps a lot with all of my crafting. She, she can do anything. She can knit, she can sew, she's done crochet, she's done macrame, she's done cross stitch, she's done um, embroidery, anything, honestly, you name it, I'm sure that she's, she's tried it. So. Um, she has a ton of friends and she and her friends are always doing crafty things together and she's just she's just the person who draws tons of people um, into her company and um, she's just such a wonderful person to be around so anyway she had these um, these friends of hers two of them this was a long time ago in, in the 80s and um, they really, really wanted to, to bring crafters together and they really wanted to, to, you know, show their work and not just have people be at home making crafts and not, not basically being appreciated for their crafts. And, um, and so they decided, you know, they thought of, 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 of this big idea like, what if we start our own company? What if we start our own business um, where we can help people, you know, sell things that they've made and get people interested in handmade items and that they're worth something and that, you know, it's amazing. So, um, they wanted to basically start a consignment business, but just of purely handmade items and local. So, the idea formed, it you know, became something big. And my grandma and I, um, on a side note, we, we write letters to each other. And um, she knew that I had been dreaming of of um, making a business for myself called a homespun house, which is what they ended up calling their, um, their business. Their business was named a homespun house. The three of these ladies decided to call it that. And um, so in 1986, my, my grandma and I write a lot of letters, and so she, because she knew that I had been dreaming about starting this business after the one that she started, and starting a podcast, and um, so she sent me these these newspaper clippings, which are so amazing. So, so here is the so it opened in um, September 13th, 1986. So the pleasure of your company is requested at our grand opening Saturday, September 13th. 10 a.m. to 5 p.m. So this is the the newspaper clipping of Homespun House. And I think that's so cool. I think that's just really, really neat that she that she kept that. And then she sent it to me like, like how neat is that? Please join us for refreshments and prizes. Our holiday room will be open for your Christmas browsing. So there is that. And um so the, the house that they, they purchased a house, basically. I remember going there when I was little. It was so amazing. It was right on Main Street. And the town that I come from is, is quite little. So it's super quaint and charming. And um, it's really, really pretty, you know. I didn't appreciate it when I was little. But now when I go back there, I think it's, there's something really special and um, really nice about it. So um, anyway the the house that they purchased was on main street and i remember going there when i was little and it was so neat it was here here it says come to our 131 year old house with five rooms of uniquely handmade gifts for you and your friends so this is just their little thing but the house was it had all of these because it was so old and i don't know i don't know much about houses but i don't know if this is a normal thing in super older american houses but the rooms were all super tiny, teeny tiny, and um, 
everything was really narrow and the ceilings were smaller. It was just, I can remember going there after school, you know, to, to go and visit with my grandma and looking through all of these rooms. You know, this house was packed with amazingly handmade handmade things. I remember, I remember, as it said there, the Christmas room, just full of super neat Christmas decorations and Christmas ornaments. And I have a lot of the things in my home that were made for a homespun house, for my grandma's business. And I just remember such amazing times at this business of hers and her friends. And it was so community based and people were so involved. And it's just a super special memory for me and her business was based upon everything positive and wanting to help people and something really special like bringing the community together and bringing crafters together and um, I just really that's just something so special to me and the fact that my grandma had this I feel like it's something that I'm kind of sharing with her even though she's not you know involved in the podcast and in this business that I've just started on Etsy but it's slowly growing and as I do it, I really, really think about her and um, and I put her into a lot of the thought. I'm getting a little bit emotional because um, she's a super special, amazing person and I miss her. <laughs> I, don't, I don't see her all the time, obviously. She's in America, but, but anyway, um, I just think it's super cool that we kind of connect in this sort of way and I'm taking over a business name that, that she had and she owned and kind of carrying it on and um, super, super special for me. So um, here's another newspaper clipping where you guys can actually see my grandma. So this is the house right here in the bottom. There's a picture of the house. And here, right there, is my grandma Sue. And my little girl is actually named after her. Elodie Sue is her name. So, so that's her. And those are her three friends. So how neat is that? It's the homespun house. A home away from home for three area craft persons. So. And there's the little sign. Oh, it's so cool. I just think it's so neat. I'm so happy that, that she sent this this my way so super special I've had this for a while and um, I should frame it there's an article back here about it but I won't I won't read that all to you it's it's really neat so my grandma was so involved in the the crafting community she she still sells some of her hand knit items she doesn't sell her patterns anymore or anything but she was really involved at one time and um, the Country Craft Works magazine. I don't know if you guys have ever heard of it. If you're maybe um, in your 50s or older and you live in America and you were really involved in, in crafting at that time, she designed a load of, of knitting patterns and some sewing patterns in those magazines. I can share with you guys those um, another time because they're really amazing. Um, yeah, so that's a little bit, you know, why my name is a homespun house. It's just, it's really, really special. So um, now let's talk a little bit about the KAL, the shawl knit along. So as you guys can see, I'm kind of in the middle of my, of my shawl. I'm knitting the Whipper Will by uh, Karina Spencer and I'm using Lanai yarn, the Evil Ocean colorway, just for the, the main base of my shawl. I'm using, um, the coral color for the contrast and it's coming along really nicely. I would say I'm about halfway done. Um, I have about 10 more days and I really I really don't think that there's such a big, um, I'm not worried about, about getting it finished. I'm having a lot of fun knitting on it. Now that I'm getting to the longer rows, oh my goodness. Um, they seem like they are taking forever. And um, <coughs> I'm sorry, I'm a little bit sick by the way. I lost my voice for it's still kind of lost. It's slowly coming back, but um, I lost my voice for a couple of days and that's why I sound like this. And I may be coughing and drinking a little bit of my, I know I should be drinking tea, but I'm drinking coffee as almost always. Um, 
yeah, so I'm not worried about it, um, about it being finished. Yeah, so what I was saying, I'm sorry, I got off a little, got off a little off track. Um, it's super, super easy knitting. I mean, you know, until you have the one round where you really have to concentrate, but um, it's just on one side you do a couple yarn overs and it's always, it's stockinette basically, and then with some random yarn overs thrown in there, which I have memorized until I get to the the more um, complicated round, which, which is super simple, but I'm finding it a teeny bit boring now. Um, Maybe I just need to pop in a super good movie or a super good podcast. You guys, give me an awesome movie. I really want an awesome movie to listen to. I've been listening to, um, I don't know if you guys like like dystopian um, kind of books, but I really love them. I super love these like nerdy Lord of the Rings, um, Harry Potter. Um, I like the Hunger Games. They were all right. It's not like I was super in love with them. I did not like Twilight. Sorry, I thought that she, that the, the author of that book just used way too many of the, the same adjectives and, and things like that. I didn't find her right of super creative. But anyway, so I've been listening to um, Delirium by Lauren Oliver. I've already read the first and second book, and I started to listen to the third audiobook. It's a trilogy. And um, I read these, the first two, so long ago that... I was like, wait, what's going on? <laughs> but I was super loving the first book. So it's it's like a dystopian sort of society, Delirium by Lauren Oliver. And it's basically um, a book where, where love is a disease. And um, that's all I'm going to say about it. If, if you're interested in that sort of book, you should totally read it. Um, it's not like super intelligently written or anything like that. It's just kind of a fun, interesting, it really keeps me listening sort of book. And while I've already read it and know what's basically going to happen, I kind of don't because I read it over a year ago, two years ago. <laughs> um, and I love it. I'm almost finished. There are about, um, yeah, I would say I'm three quarters of the way finished and it's super nice. So I've really been enjoying that while I've been knitting on whatever I've been knitting on. So, um, yeah, while, while we're talking about the shawl knit along, let's just do this kind of out of order because I can. Um, let's talk a little bit about, oh my God, you guys, wait, 19 of you, I, I believe, is it 19? Yeah, 19 of you have finished your shawls. They look amazing. Um, I'm so impressed by some of the work that a lot of you guys have done um, and the, the how quickly you've done it, like what in the heck? <laughs> You guys are super fast knitters, and are you like just knitting on your shawl? Um, and there are so many people who are involved, and like like Claire and I said the last episode, it's so cool that so many of you are keeping the forums going, and um, I'm just having super fun watching you guys, like cheering each other on, and, and cheering you on as well, and seeing all of the super, super neat patterns. So, yeah. I cannot wait to see what all of the finished shawls look like February 1st. So I know a lot of um, shawl knit-alongs do like where it's the 31st of the month, but um, this one is the first, February 1st. It can be in on February 1st. That's the ending date. It's not the day before the 1st of February. So yeah. And I've been uh, thinking as well about um, the Ravelenix. Are any of you guys doing that? I'm wondering if I should get involved. And I also thought about doing a knit along in February, but I think if a lot of you are doing the, the Ravelenics, that that doesn't really make sense. Let me know about that. So back to the shawl knit along, we have giveaways, like always. So I've kind of changed the giveaway. It's still basically the same. We still have the Rolex from Fondant Fiber, which are packaged. I don't need to show you those again. But um, we have the yarn from Spin Monkeys, ta Tara or Tara. And um, so originally I showed you guys this one. It's a purple sock yarn. It's really beautiful. It's violet Beauregard colorway. It's an 80% superwash merino and a 20% nylon. It's super pretty, super pretty jewel toned. And then she also sent this uh, sport weight. It's 100% superwash merino in the golden child colorway. And I thought, 
you know, maybe it's a bit nicer if you guys can can choose which one you want. So I think that um, there still will just be two giveaways. It will be the Rolex from Fondant Fiber and then one skein of yarn. So the winner will be allowed to choose if they want the purple um, sock yarn or if they want the golden child um, sport weight. The, um, the sock yarn has 400 yards and the sport weight has 270, so I think super generous for, for a sport weight. That, that would be enough for me to make myself a pair of socks, of, of sport weight socks, which actually I've never made, but I'm kind of curious about like a cozy, um, you know, house, house socks, or even boot socks, because you guys, it is snowing outside today. Yeah. It's snowing. I cannot even believe it. I'm so excited. When Elodie woke up this morning, I woke up with her, and we came into the living room, and all the um, the curtains were drawn, and I opened them, and oh my goodness, did I squeal, and Elodie squealed with excitement. She loves snow. So um, I, I wonder if she remembers it from last year. I'm not super sure if she does but it's really pouring down. And we've only had two snows this year. It's already almost February, which is crazy. It's been so, so warm here in Germany. It's been like 40 degrees Fahrenheit, um, anywhere between 10, around 10 degrees Celsius, which is just ridiculous for February. And so we've had two snows, once on St. Nicholas, and that didn't last. It just kind of sat like a teeny frost. And then we had another snow maybe a week ago, I think, but it was so warm that the second it touched the, the ground, it, it um, melted. So it didn't even really exist. It existed in the air, and then once it hit the ground, there was nothing. It was still really beautiful, but today it is going to stay there, I think. And I'm so excited. I'm, I'm looking over here because I have these big windows in my living room. They go from floor to, to ceiling and they go out onto the balcony and I can see the snow falling down and it's oh, it makes my heart sing and it makes me so excited. Um, we have a wooden sled for Elodie and I hope that today when we pick her up from Kita that we can uh, pull her around on it. So um, I think that will be super, super fun. The next project that I'm working on is a pair of socks. A new pair of socks from Spin Monkey. So, um, I am knitting on the Retro Rib Socks by Evelyn A. Clark, which I love the name, by the way, Evelyn. That's my great grandma's name. And this is the way that they look. Okay, so the socks come from an interweave book. It's called Favorite Socks, 25 Timeless Designs from Interweave. This book is so beautiful. So I got this for my birthday, I think when I was... Hmm, I have no idea, maybe 18 years old. Yeah, quite a, a long time ago. And um, I could have even been 20 or something. And I really love this book. I think this is probably the nicest sock book that I have seen in a very long time. I think it's maybe the nicest sock book I've ever seen, to be honest. So it, it has been really, really hard for me to, um, to knit a sock that isn't just a plain Molly sock. You know, the sock that I always knit on size uh, 2.5 millimeter needles. They're more like a 2 millimeter needle. They're an American 2. And um, the Addy Turbos is what I've been using a lot lately. I really, really love the Magic Loop method. I love all of your um, recommendations for what, what you prefer for circular needles because the Addy Turbos just don't cut it. The ones that I have anyway, just the standard, because they are, they're always kinking. And so I'm going to order um, 
I haven't decided exactly which pair, but I'm definitely probably, definitely probably going to order um, a pair this week to try out. A lot of people have recommended the, the Chagu ones, so, so maybe I'll order those. I've also been thinking about ordering Carbons because I love Knit Pro Carbons. That's what I knit, that's what I'm knitting my shawl out of. Um, that's what I'm knitting my Grace cardigan out of, which is kind of on hold right now. Um, I love them. I love their needles. Carbon's needles, if you guys have not tried those by Knit Pro, are so amazing. They click when you knit on them, which just makes me so happy. And um, they're amazing. So maybe I'll order those. Um, yeah. So anyway, back to, to this book. So there's the, the retro rib socks, which are the ones that I am knitting. And before I get ahead of myself and show you guys more patterns from this book, I'll show you the yarn. So I've, I've just kind of cast these on. I started to cast them on last night and then I got busy with Elodie and um, other exciting things that I didn't really work on it any farther. So. Um, I'm knitting it out of Perry's Cove, the Revolution Sock Formula, which is an 80% superwash and 20% nylon. And it's by Spin Monkeys. And this is the way that it looks, yarn. You know, I feel like I can't capture this in a picture. I, I tried to Instagram it and um, I've taken a couple of photographs and even the photograph that she had online looks, it doesn't look like it at all. I feel like, like I mentioned in the last podcast, a lot of her her pictures, and I don't mean this in a bad way, but but I feel like they don't represent the yarn super amazingly because her yarn is really beautiful. She has this turquoise colorway on the website right now that I think about ordering. Um, it's so pretty in person. Claire has the the turquoise in a sock in a sock or no in a sport weight, but I would like it in in a sock weight. Anyway, so this one is super jewel toned. It's it is turquoise and it's blue and it's really uh, pretty pretty plum with some really pale blues. So I don't, I hardly have anything knit on this. I have three rows. That's it. It's not even really worth showing. And I'm knitting this on just some some German uh, double pointed needles. US one. It was so hard for me to you know knit this pattern. Um, pattern, <laughs> this pattern sock pattern, because I really love my plain Molly socks on, on just the, you know, they're, they're so standard and they're so simple and they're so enjoyable. And I wear my plain socks a thousand times more than I wear any intricately designed sock that I have. And so I'm kind of, I really, really want to knit a really, really pretty pair of socks, but I don't know if it's if there's really a point to it. I kind of want to challenge myself, even though I know it's not really, I won't be challenged, but um, I kind of want to challenge myself to, to having some pretty socks and, and maybe I will wear them, I don't know. I kind of, I'm unsure. I'm wondering if I should knit these out and just knit a pair of vanilla socks with them. But I love, I love this this pattern so much, the retro rib socks, they're just beyond beautiful. So um, I wanna show you some other, some other really pretty patterns in this book. There also is um, a beautiful, so these ones are by Nancy Bush. These ones are ones that I really love. They're Fair Isle and Nancy Bush, um, I think she writes super nice sock patterns. So this is a Latvian sock pattern and I would really really like to knit this at some point. I can see myself definitely wearing a Fair Isle sock way more than um, a rib or more than a, a pattern sock definitely. I think I really like um, crazy colorful socks and I wear them every day. Every day I wear my hand knit socks. So here's another Nancy Bush. Um, charted one. I don't think I would knit that one, but I think it's it's neat. And they all have little stories uh, about them. Some merino lace socks. I think those are really beautiful. 
I mean, come on, let's not forget the ones on the cover as well. Those are super pretty too. Um, what else? They have lots of really just, you know, there's also plain, plain socks for, for those of you who are just learning to knit. So it's a super great book for um, kind of falling into, if you really want to knit socks, there are a lot of really easy patterns and then you can kind of work your way up to a little bit more intricate one. I really like these ones too. I think those are really pretty. And you know what I'm noticing as I look at these is that most of them are knit with, I think all of them, none of them are knit with variegated sock yarn. Okay, there is one sock pattern in here that I just think is so ugly. I cannot understand these at all. And these are Nancy Bush. They're called Maida's Socks. It's an Estonian lace pattern right here. I think those are so terrible. I cannot understand those. And I really like um, these. It's really, really hard to see the pattern, the cable rib socks right here. But I really like that the with the two ribs or the two cables, one on each side, I think that's super, super timeless. You know, I have a pair of a really pretty kind of like mustard yellow uh, socks that my great grandma knit. And um, there's a little hole at the foot. They just need to be darned, but they as well. I noticed that a lot of vintage um, older socks that maybe grandparents have knit, um, people back in the early 1900s, a lot of them are knit on like size zero needles with this really pretty cable down the side. I will share those with you in the next episode. So I really, really love those. And these, the go with the flow socks. I really love these too. But the problem is, is like I said, I love so much just my standard plain Molly socks, the ones that I always knit. And while, while I'm so in love with all of these, I don't know if I will knit them, and maybe I do just need to, you know, bite the bullet and and knit a pair of fancier socks. But okay, there are tons. There are so many patterns in here. I'm, I cannot even begin. So there are 25, way more than what I showed you that I actually love. But um, yeah. So if you guys are looking for a super good sock book, I definitely definitely re recommend that one. I super, super love it. Um, so now on to finished objects. So those were in my super cute once upon a time project bag, which I love these. I love the once upon a time one. Um, I don't know. Something about that one is really special to me. Um, Finished objects. You guys, I got a lot of knitting done this week. Like, I'm pretty impressed with myself and I'm really happy with, with the progress of what I got. And as you see, I cast on the, the Spin Monkeys um, socks, which by the way, she still has that promo code in her shop. If you um, go to her Etsy store and you um, use the coupon code HOMESPUN, that's it, just HOMESPUN, you can get 20% off. So. Um, as you see that I've cast on those, that means I finished Robert's socks. Yay! So he's already worn them, and you know what, you guys? He has super big feet. I know I've already told you this, but he's really tall. He's six foot four and a half. He's almost 200, or 200. He's almost two meters tall. And um, so he has super big feet. And they're too big for the sock blockers, so that's why they're a little bit crazy looking. So he's, he wore them this morning. I had to take them off of his feet to film this. But um, he has three pair of hand-knit socks now, so um, I gave him a pair of his own to put on in exchange for these. But he loves them. They are his favorite. He thinks that they're so cool looking, and I'm so happy. Like, what better feeling than to knit something for someone who is, especially especially your significant other. like. When he saw them and he smiled and he gave me a kiss and he said, thank you so much. They're so, they're so nice. And then he put them on and kind of like squealed and said that he really loved them. So that was so cool. Um, 
So maybe I need to knit him more tweed socks. I asked him if he wanted another pair and he said he wants just one more pair. He thinks he has three right now, that's it. Which is a lot. I mean, I've knit this huge man three pair of hand knit socks in the last, I think, month and a half. So here these are, here's the first one. Like I said, they, they really aren't ugly looking, it's just the sock blockers. So here's the first one. And you guys, I just finished these yesterday. Oh my God. I literally, so one of these, here's, here's the other one, just so you know that I really made two. <laughs> um, one of these is one row shorter because of a whole skein of Regia Tweed Classic Trend yarn. For this man, I used up, this man, my husband, I used up the entire ball. I'm one row short. One of these is one row, one row shorter than the other, which just a decrease round, which isn't, which doesn't really matter at all. And I didn't say anything to him and I won't because there's no point, but um, he used up that entire skein. I was honestly in shock. And um, the, the ridiculous thing was, is my, my Cozy Memories blanket, the, the one with the, the patchwork that I'm using, sock yarn, and um, I was so excited when I first got this yarn that I immediately knit one of the squares for that. And uh, when I got to the end, I thought, oh my God, you are so, that was so totally poor planning because if I wouldn't have knit one of those squares, I could have, you know, finished the sock perfectly. But I'm, I'm super happy with how they turned out. I'm happy that, that I actually used one of the squares, that I actually knit one of the squares to begin with because otherwise I wouldn't have had uh, the sock yarn to add to my square blanket, my, my cozy memories blanket, I've titled it. So he loves these. I'm a happy girl. Um, and I finished two more, two more objects. So last time you guys saw that I was working on the Toddler Loafers by Lisa Anna Michelle from the Pick and Knit Patterns. Um, this is the one that, that Claire already knit in the white and brown and they turned out a bit too big. So the first pair that I knit um, are right here. They're really little. I would say they're for about a year old. Whoops. Sorry about that. So they're for about a one year old, but they turned out amazing. Um, they're so, so soft. I have I've added the buttons. The fit of them is just really nice. Um, the problem was with these, while, while they still look amazing and I actually already have someone to give them to, uh, my, my husband Robert, his friend had a baby about seven months ago named Elvis and uh, we haven't given anything to them yet and he asked if we could give these to him, to Elvis, because uh, the father of Elvis and his wife are really into handmade gifts and they really appreciate them. So I'll give him these and then I'll knit him a baby aviatrix uh, hat, which Elodie had when she was little. I loved that hat. So, and I'll knit it in the same exact yarn. Obviously I won't felt it. So, so here those are. Here, let's see if I can. They're so adorable. I really love them. And then because they turned out a little bit obviously way too small for my two-year-old. I checked my gauge this time and uh, I used Cascade 220 Heather in yellow because I really love bright colors on little kids and adults and these turned out super amazing. I am so happy with how they turned out. They're, they fit her perfect. I could not have asked for a better fit. So um, here they are. I still have to, to sew some suede to the bottom, but they're, they're, they've just almost finished drying. I would say three more hours and they are, are done with drying. So um, they're adorable. I really, really like the pattern. And you know, she has um, patterns, this exact pattern basically for an adult. 
and I can totally see how it's really how you can really tweak it to, to fit you it's a really customizable pattern and I'm these are so fast I mean as you can see I knit two pair I finished a pair of socks I've cast on a pair of socks and I've gotten a bit farther done on my shawl so they're really fast I think before I think I said three hours per pair but I don't think that's right I would say I would say you can knit a pair in four hours um, four and a half I mean it really depends on how fast you are but I love these I really want to knit a pair of felted slippers for Robert and I um, I have the fiber trends pattern which has thousands of slippers knitted out of it and um, it just uses so much yarn um, that's just something that I don't know I don't know how I feel about that it uses so 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 much yarn like a thousand meters of worsted weight for one pair of slippers which sounds really expensive uh, for a pair of slippers um, yeah so that's it for for all of the the stuff that I'm working on now I can talk a little bit about some yarn that I've accumulated this week um, here it is. It's called Linier 317 patch. It's their trend collection. It's made out of superwash wool and it has all of these really, really pretty colors. So it's purple, green, um, kind of like an evergreen, a minty green, and this like it's kind of like a mix of yellow and brown and green. It's super pretty. It's a worsted weight and it's not very plied. Um, it looks like it's a two ply but it's really really finely plied or loosely plied I guess. So I got three skeins of this and I'm not sure what I'm going to do with it. I thought it would make... So I initially got it... Um, I was gifted this yarn actually from Robert's mom. I initially got it for uh, making a sweater for Elodie for next year. It's really soft. Um, but now looking at it I think it would make amazing felted slippers. Um, but it would also make a super super adorable sweater and I got three of them like I said so it is enough to make a size um, I would probably make a size four for a four-year-old because she's really really tall for her age um, so yeah isn't it really pretty I really love it and I'm super excited I should be getting some more yarn this week so next week I should have hopefully a bit of of yarny goodness to to share with you guys so, um, I'm not really sure what I'm going to knit with that. I'm not even planning on, on knitting it right away. I just saw it and Robert's mom wanted to, to buy me some yarn and I thought, oh, totally, totally you can buy me some. So, I browsed around the shop and I found that and I thought, this, you know, I, I usually knit Elodie sweaters for her the year before, usually, I mean, she's only two years old, but, but that's kind of how it's worked out. And um, right now she has the owl sweater that I've shown in a previous episode. And I really love that owl sweater. I, I honestly think it's something that I will knit for her every year. Um, I kind of, I've knit it, like I said, I think four times. I kind of, I think I have the pattern pretty much memorized. And if I don't, it's super easy to follow. And so maybe I'll knit that. I don't know how that will look with the color changes. I've never knit the owl sweater by Katie Davies on um, a variegated yarn. But, but I think it would, I think that will maybe look nice. Um, she doesn't have any hand knit. Well, she has one from my grandma for next year, a hand knit cardigan, a Scandinavian, really pretty blue cardigan for next year. She still wears it this year. It's a little bit oversized, which is cute. But um, yeah, so on to my shop update. As always, the past two weeks, the shop has gone amazingly well. And I have purchased so many fun fabrics. I have 
A Day at the Pond, which nobody has purchased this bag. I'm not really sure why because I love it. I love, you know, the frog reading by the stone and the, the little one playing with his mom in the water, the picnic. I just think, I think that's really nice. I have, um, I have all of the ones that I had before. The socks with the fox wearing socks ones are completely um, sold out. I loved those. Um, I, I really, really love those. So here's the mother bee. And lucky feather. Oop, there's a little piece of string hanging on it. So lucky feather. Another one. And then I have all of the other ones that I've made, but I have some super fun fabric. So I have, um, oops, I have these with cats and dogs. It's so adorable. I really think those ones are so fun. Um, I got some awesome, I'm so excited about this. This will make super sturdy, amazing bags. It's um, corduroy with sheep. Super cool. Mommy sheep and baby sheep. I love that. Um, I have some fall fabric, some really pretty scarf wearing animals. Um, I have the springtime birds and the trees. Pretty feathers, some more beautiful leaves, and then I have out getting honey. I love these ones. That one's really cool. And then I've also been getting a lot of messages uh, from people. I also have, you know, the strawberry picking, the confections. Um, I have all of those, which you guys have already seen, but I just kind of wanted to show you the new fun fabric. But I also have been getting a bit of questions, um, people asking about like my tea, my, my bag with tea, because a lot of people really like this and I haven't offered anything like that in the shop yet. But in not this shop update, but in the next shop update, I have ordered some beautiful tea fabric. I'm super excited about it. It's it's beyond gorgeous, and um, people have also been asking about like more shabby chic style bags rather than this kind of like fun bag. So I I have a bit of floral. Um, this is a German floral fabric. So the reason why I'm showing you all of these is if any of you see anything that you like that that you don't see on a bag, I would love to do custom orders. That's something that I'm completely open to and something that I want to do for people. I want you to get bags that you want in any size, in any drawstring, in with a zipper. Um, so this is some Kath Kitson, really pretty uh, floral with roses fabric. This one's really awesome. This is an old, old vintage fabric. I love this one. I think this is my favorite of the floral. This is also a vintage um, fabric. And these are German vintage fabrics, which is, makes it even cooler for you Americans and things like that. And this one's really pretty too. So that is what I have to show for you today for the for the shop, for my bags. Um, yeah, I think that's about it. So the next time that I guess I see you guys, it will, we will almost be wrapping up the, um, the shawl knit along, which I'm super excited about. I cannot, I cannot wait to see what's, what's going to come for the podcast in February. Um, I think it will be so exciting. I really want to hear your ideas about if you want to do a knit along. I thought about doing uh, the Cascadia ebook knit along because I love the Cascadia ebook. I don't know if you guys have browsed through it yet, but it's super beautiful and there are so many lovely patterns. 
Um, or if we, we kind of just want to do like a, a Ravelenix sort of thing in our group. Um, we're thinking about joining Team Sasquatch. And yeah, so um, let me know what, what sort of ideas you have. I would love to hear any and all of them. It was really wonderful to chat with you all today and I look so forward to our next time that we see each other next Thursday. Have a lovely week ahead of you and happy New Year.